Central. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Glad to have you here. Thank yeah. you. Um, can you, how did you get into playing old time? So it was uh, more or less by coincidence. I was at a, an Irish session in Göttingen mm -hmm. and uh, I had for some reason played a Swedish tune and uh, um, a guy there talked to me or asked me in Swedish if I wanted to join him uh, playing American music with, with a couple of guys outside Göttingen mm -hmm. and I thought why not so I, I joined him in and that was my first contact with old time music. I had actually never really heard about it before. I thought that American music were, was bluegrass or, mm. um, and that kind of stuff and that was more or less about it. So. Mm. And you grew up playing Swedish folk music? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm, my parents are, are dancers or yeah, folk dancers. My mother plays the fiddle and my grandpa plays the, the accordion. Mm -hmm. So I was grew up with music more or less, so mm -hmm. and started playing when I was a kid. So did they play play music at home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mother, um, yeah, my mother played the fiddle very much at home, and uh, my um, older brother as well. So I was started to to want to to get or I wanted to get started with with fiddle quite early. So mm -hmm. and she would play solo stuff, or what would she play? Yeah, she was, um, she's, um, well, we were all part of a group, uh, um, a music group in, in the village where I come from. Uh -huh. So she used to play the re repertoire of, of that music group mm -hmm. at home. And uh, uh, that was the music was, that was around us. And it was all, it was all Swedish folk music it was, yeah. dancing. Yeah, so Swedish That's dance cool. music, yeah. And your grandpa played accordion, was he also in the group or? No, he um, he lived quite a far away from, or depends on on how you see the the, the distance. But it's like um, he lived. He, he didn't live in the village where uh, where I grew up, uh -huh. uh, and he was more into the the popular popular music of of the yeah, you know, like the forties, fifties when when he grew up, uh -huh. so to say. So it was a um, was still Swedish traditional music, but but in the I think in the forties you had a, a Quite a huge accordion boom, so uh -huh. to say, and, and that was the music that he that he played. Mm -hmm. But he, of course, l learned the the music that uh, we kids played and um, that my mother played as well, so that we could play together. Right. Yeah. And so, when did you pick up the fiddle? I was a uh, couple of weeks before I turned five, I think, mm -hmm. if I remember it correctly. So it was was early. Not a full-size fiddle, I presume. No, no. It was. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember how small it was, but I tried to play it a couple of years ago, and it was uh, definitely too large for for my fingers. Uh, too small for my fingers right now. So, yeah. And what was? How did you learn then? Um, well, first, my my mom tried to learn uh, or teach me the basics, but as you know, when you're a kid, you don't listen that much to your mother. Right. So um, I learned from from another fiddler in in the. Um, in the area, uh -huh. um, so went there once every every two weeks and and uh, got lessons from him, him learning Swedish folk music. Okay, so. and was that? I don't know how much you know about classical technique. How is is the the technique for Swedish folk fiddle very different or similar or? It's, um, I would say it's not a, it's it's not as strict. I mean, it's more it's more. Playing for fun, you don't have this this uh, the classical schooling that you have to to stand up properly, have a straight back, and and all of that. So right. it's uh, it's more laid back, yeah. And so you when you started learning, it was just jumping into tunes pretty quickly, or yeah, after a, a, well, the ba the whole basic with the uh, with learning the the, the how would you call it tone ladder uh, scales. scales yeah uh, scales and um, and holding the, the fiddle in the proper way and everything. After that, it, it got into tunes mm -hmm. quite, quite early. And mm -hmm. I'd also joined the, the kids version of the group where I, my mother was in quite early. And uh, there was quite an immersion in the, in the folk music as well. So right. it was tunes, tunes from the beginning. And were those, did those groups play performances or were they playing for dances and parties and things like that? For dances or... Uh, most of the time, so some performances like church concerts or, or smaller concerts in the mm -hmm. um, in the neighborhood or in the in the area, but it was mostly dance, dance music. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and so, do you think that that's part of why 
uh, old times also sort of familiar but also attractive? I mean, sort of similar but different because it's also a social sort of a social fiddle music. It might be, yeah. But when I started out with old time, I wasn't really aware of it as a, as a dance music. So mm -hmm. that's started to become clear to me, like just in the past year or so, mm -hmm. or past year more or less. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something in the music. So it's it's so much. It's so much more simplistic, or so much um, almost minimalistic that you can that you have such a, a, a large space of, of or possibility of. of um, improvisation. Mm. This is much freer, so you can uh, you can get lost in the music a bit more than you can with Swedish music. Music, mm. I think, somehow. Because the Swedish music is more f focused on the melody and. Something. Yeah, and it's um, it doesn't. I mean, we play it together, but it's it's not like in the or the way that I've learn to play all time now that you sit sit together and you play the same tune for a very long long time mm -hmm. it's usually that you play it like three four five times and that's that's mm -hmm. about it mm -hmm. um, while with old time music at least the way that I've um, played it here in Germany is that you sit down and you play it for, for a very long time and you, you have the freedom to, to space out a bit and, and sure. try your own thing a bit more right. and so do you remember going to that first old time session that the guy invited you to uh, yeah, yeah. What do you remember from that? That it was, well, first I was a bit uh, surprised that the melodies were so simple. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the first one was, I think it was June Apple that I played. Okay. And, and the melody was, was quite simple and I, I remember sitting and, and looking at them and, and um, one of the fiddlers um, were just playing the fiddle totally different than I had was used to holding the bow much higher up, sitting a bit very relaxed and just... It was a, 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 some kind of I don't know, looseness or, or mm -hmm. a bit very relaxed way of playing it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was a bit... It took a while for me, I think it took a couple of months before I realized that the, the way I played music at the time didn't really fit with the old time way of playing. Mm -hmm. but, Technique-wise. Yeah, technique-wise, yeah. Uh, uh, didn't get the, the same sound that he had, and I wasn't quite clear about why. But right. Was turned out it was all about relaxing, so... Yeah. I mean, I, I think there are quite a few people who come to old time, if they come from, if they come from um, certainly from classical music or Suzuki or whatever, but lots of other genres as well, as well who in, you know, encounter old time and think that the musicians are... Um, are being lazy or sloppy or or just that yeah that there's somehow a, a judgment of the of the technique as being not as refined as in others and then yeah after a while they realized that that was a mistaken judgment that it's just different yeah it's, it's just the technique that you have for that kind of music i mean that's right. the or seems to be the way the way to play it and and uh, um I guess if you have, have learned that there is one proper way to play the fiddle, that's, it takes a while to get used to, to playing it otherwise. Right, so, to unlearn that. Yeah, to unlearn it, yeah. Uh, so you, at that, that first time you said you found the, 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 the melodies quite simplistic, but also saw how people were like getting into the groove. And yeah. Was there, were you immediately uh, into the music or were you at first, what were your first reactions? Yeah, it was quite immediately hooked. Hooked. It's. Uh, I don't know if, if it was the first time, but after a, a couple of times, I, I was quite clear that it was music that I wanted to get deeper into uh -huh, for uh -huh. some reason. So, um, and uh, after a while, when I went to, to a workshop down in, in Elmstein mm -hmm. uh, in, in Germany in the Palatinate, I. And really experienced like sitting in a jam uh, until late in the night. That was, yeah. After that, I was hooked. So okay. it's. <laughs> There's people call that getting your old time lobotomy. You know, oh yeah, yeah. Have you heard that before? No, I haven't. But okay. it, it makes sense. Yeah. That's right. 
lots of people have the story about getting their their old time lobotomy. Yeah, and just just until you I don't know you play it until you're exhausted, and then you play a bit more, and then you get into it. Then you, right. you can't escape. So and then you're like, oh, that's why people do this. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Now I get it. That's cool. And that was down at Elmstein. Yeah, that was the first time you sort of had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mm-hmm. I wanted to to to. Uh, um, Expand uh, or not expand, but but play. Uh, try to learn something new as well, and go to a workshop and meet some other people mm-hmm. uh, playing old time as well. So after quick googling, I found the Elmstein and I went there on, on good luck and right. yeah. That's cool. I think it must be, I don't know, three or four years, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not that long, but it's since then it's it's become one of the things that I play the most, more or less. I think. Right. Right. And what do you now that you've been playing it for a while? Can you do you have any reflections on why? Yeah, why it's attractive to you? Why? Why? Because you can already do these other things, right? You're, you've been a, a skilled uh, Swedish player for most of your life. Yeah, well, it's. Uh, I think it's about the the, the freedom in the music. Uh-huh. So I mean, the tunes are simplistic. They are are quite short. They are you, repetitive. But but when you scale off all of those low, those um, ornamentations and and that you can find in, in Swedish and Irish music, you get sort of something really basic and and that gives you space to. To explore yourself, mm. uh, or not yourself, but explore explore the way you can play the tune. You can you can play it in a, in so many different ways, and you can you can uh, improvise in so many different ways. And there is a way of, of almost talking with the, the other people that you are playing with through the music. That's hopefully yeah yeah, and, and it's it's something that I've um, I mean I enjoy Swedish playing Swedish and Irish music very much as well. Uh. But the old time music, it seems like it's boiled down to the most, most common crown, so to say. That is something uh-huh. that's allows for a lot of freedom in the in, in the way you play it. Right. And what um, what kinds of like when you when you start doing improvisation or you start playing around with tunes? I guess two questions. Like when you learn when you learn an old time tune. Um, do you try and get like one solid version or do you try and just sort of get a skeleton version that you can play around with? And then like once you have that, how do you, how do you think about um, doing the improvisation? Is it something you do intentionally or do you just try and see, just try and let it happen through playing the music over and over again? Um, well, I try to get the first a, a skeleton version going. So when... Um... I mean, at a, at a if you're at a jam and, and so many people playing different version of, of the tune, it's, it's hard to to pick out one and concentrate on that. So it's right. I try to get the skeleton version and I just try to fill out the gaps um, as I go along. 
And I guess I just, well, either I, I just go along and just play the skeleton or play, play the melody the whole, um, the whole time, or just try to, to, to find what works. Mm. So I say just try to, to find some way to play it that I mainly I like, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that doesn't cause, us, it cause too many angry, <laughs> uh, angry eyes on me. So. Yeah, yeah. And do you think, do you, I mean, do you pay attention to um, sort of rhythmic uh, ornament, you know, rhythmic variations or ornaments with the melody or, you know, all implying different chord changes or... Just sort of whatever seems to make sense. I think it's a hard question. I think I try to concentrate on the on the core, on, on the chords, and and uh, on the harmony a bit more, and try to build out from that. Um, But especially when it's a tune that someone is, is teaching at a jam, something that is, is newly introduced that I, I haven't heard before, and someone, there's some person who is obviously starting to play it, I, um, I try to get as much as, as what he, of what he plays or she plays mm. as I can, and trying to, to look at the ornamentations, the way the bowing is. And, mm. um, because, I mean, the bowing seems to be the most, most important thing in, in the old-time music that mm. you, that's where you get the groove, so. Right. So I think that's probably even even more important than the than the um, harmonies that you get the the feeling and the rhythm right. Right, right. Um, what are you excited about right now in your old time playing? I'm um, well. Currently, I'm, I'm learning the banjo as well, uh -huh. and um, for the first uh, for or. I'm, I'm starting to getting the feeling that I'm I'm getting the hang of the basic uh, or the basics of it, uh -huh. and I think that's what I'm I'm most um, most eager of what I'm, I'm I'm most enthusiastic about right now is is that I'm starting to reach a level when I can uh, not just play what I learn but also put my own own way of playing into the to the clawhammer or to uh -huh. the to the banjo as well. Uh -huh. So that's that was uh, that's where I put a lot of my time right now. So, right. and have you in learning the banjo? Have you has it helped you understand what's going on in the the tunes differently? Like, do you think has it given you a different perspective on what's going on in the music than than you had when you were just playing the the fiddle? Yeah, somehow. I, I can't really put the finger on it, but it's, uh, it gives, it has given me a, a different sense of the, or, or an, another feeling about the rhythm that is in the, um, yeah, the underlying rhythm, so to say. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I mean, with the banjo being a, being a rhythm instrument, I mean, it's, you have to think differently. Sure. So, and I hope, I hope that I can take a bit of the rhythm that I, I've learned to play on the banjo into the fiddling, but right. I'm not sure I'm there yet. So right, yeah. No, there's there's definitely in lots of the music the uh, more of the syncopation going on in the in the banjo. Yeah, yeah. That's then interacting with the fiddle in in a variety of ways. Right. Sometimes it's on the same beat as wherever a fiddle accent might be, but sometimes it's off a little bit from where a fiddle accent might be, and I think that. I think when you can hear that, you sort of hear a little bit more where the where that particular kind of groove comes from. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, should we play too? Yeah, sure. Okay. Love to. <laughs>
Thank you.